Hi, this is John Pitcher. I'm Nathaniel Royval. We are retina specialists with Eye Associates of New Mexico. And we're here to discuss with you the ins and outs of indirect ophthalmoscopy. So this is a standard corded indirect ophthalmoscope. Most models are fairly similar. This is a Keeler all pupil model. The key elements of the indirect ophthalmoscope include rheostat, to adjust the intensity or brightness of the beam. Beam size adjustment, small, medium, and large. And a filter which can cycle between diffuse light, focal light, red free light, and potentially even blue light. On the bottom, there's adjustments for pupillary distance, which you can use along with the adjustment for the height of the beam once the indirect is comfortably on your head. That can be accomplished with adjustments for the fitting on the top and the back. So when you put the indirect on you want to tighten the top and the back so it's at a comfortable tension, not too tight because that can cause headache with extended use, but enough that it doesn't move around on your head when you're moving your head. And then with the beam on, hold your thumb at approximately an arm's length where you'll be holding your 20 or 28 diopter lens and adjust the pupillary distance to make sure that the full beam is in view with each eye. Closing each eye individually to check that the beam is directly in the center. I like to turn my head to the side, left and right, to simulate what it'll be like during a patient exam to make sure that there's no movement of the beam. And now for the actual exam part, Ashley, our model here, has been uh, anesthetized with uh, preparacane and, and fully dilated. So we've set up the indirect ophthalmoscope as Dr. Pitcher has outlined and we have our patient Ashley who is laying perfectly flat. You can see her, our chair is fully reclined. Her eye is nice and flat with the floor. She's looking straight forward. This is called our primary position. As you can see this is set up so that I can move freely around her head. This is an ideal situation for a indirect exam. Now, for the exam, I want to first look at the posterior pole, the optic nerve and macula. And so with her looking straight forward, I'm going to get a nice view of her optic nerve and macula. Take note of my lens, how I am supporting first her lid, helping her open her lid, and I am supporting the lens by putting two fingers on her cheekbone, allowing me nice control of the focal length of this lens. Now, if I wanted to look at the superior retina, I'm going to ask her to look up. Sometimes it helps to point to the back wall. I again am going to gently assist her opening her eye lids. And, and for the superior retina, I am getting a little bit in a lower position and looking at the superior peripheral retina here. Now, if I wanted to look at the inferior retina, I am standing directly at the head of the bed now, and I'm going to ask her to look down towards her knees. I'm going to gently assist her opening her eyelids, and again, look at the peripheral retina. If I wanted to see her nasal retina, I'm going to stand on the temporal side, 180 degrees across, ask her to look over to her left. allowing me a nice view of the nasal retina. Now, for scleral depression, I recommend that the patient be anesthetized. She's been anesthetized with prepared cane drops. And now we want to look at the, we want to perform a dynamic retina exam of the superior peripheral retina. So we're going to first ask Ashley to look down. 
This will allow me to place my scleral depressor away a little further back and away from the tarsus, which can be very sensitive. And I'm going to ask her to look up to the back wall. And I'm going to gently pull the lower lid. And again, my both hands are supported on the patient's forehead and cheek here, allowing me nice control of both the depressor and the lens. You can move your depressor in and out slightly, which will allow you to elevate horseshoe tears if present. When we look inferiorly, we'll do the same thing. We will ask the patient to look up towards me. I'll place my scleral depressor and then ask her to look down. I'll gently lift the lid. And again, my lens is totally rested, allowing me a nice adjustment of focal lens. Scleral depressor can be moved in and out or side to side to give dynamic views of the retina and peripheral pathology. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on using the binocular indirect ophthalmoscope. The key is to keep practicing and try not to get frustrated. Good luck. Use your mentors.